Hello and welcome to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitz, and I'm joined by my beautiful brunette co-host, <laughs> Symphony McAllister from symphony.com. What's up, girl? Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> okay. So in the last few months, literally almost every single message or when I see people in person, they start off with, hey, girl. Hey. hey. Girl, hey. Yes. <laughs> literally at my wedding, like people were like, hey, girl. Hey. And every message I get always starts with that. Which mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course it. we can't take credit for that saying, but we definitely are known for that saying now because it's definitely like a staple. Yes. Our, yes. Our brand. I, I love it that we have a staple beginning and a staple end, you know? Yeah, totally. Although I don't have anyone telling me our, our ending statement, you know, I know. I'm kind of sad I, about that. I'm bummed. I think I'm not to toot my own horn, but I think it's a really good one liner. I know. I know. And, and, that, and mantra, but I have not had anybody like mention that or quote that to me. I so know. it just, means they haven't received that message yet. We just got to keep go. doing it. There you go. There you go. Sorry. So today's <laughs> message is actually a life changer. And I know that um, when people look at the title, they're not going to realize what a life changer it is. But today we're talking about daily habits. And yeah. before we get into the topic, of course, we want to give a shout out to the iTunes review of the week because you guys, those of you that take the time to subscribe and to leave us hopefully a five-star review um, and leave us a review, it, it helps us get the word out because this podcast is out there for you guys. We are trying to give you knowledge that can potentially change your life. So what's the iTunes review of the week? All right. So I love the title of this one. It just says, yes, <laughs> that's awesome. literally the title. <laughs> so this one is by, I don't know how to pronounce it. Katesy, I think C A I T S E, okay. but it says, I love your podcast about 75% of the episodes in each episode. I am entertained and come away with plenty of food for thought. Three episodes today kept me company during my drive to and throughout my hike. You both are hilarious and informational and the best combination, I'd say. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, mm. I love that. I know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually um, last weekend, I was in Las Vegas for the um, Beachbody Leadership Conference where they they basically, if you qualify um, as one of the leading um coaches in the network, you get yeah. a free trip every year to this leadership conference. And you know, in, in the Beachbody network, a lot of people don't know who I am just because a, a lot of people aren't into dance fitness. And of course that's yeah. my biggest following on social media, yeah. but it was so cool how many Beachbody coaches that aren't in, you know, team fits or aren't in team made, um, came up to me and were like, Oh my gosh, I love your podcast. Like I binge listen all the time. So it just, it, it makes that me happy a lot. Yeah. And, and of course it's not for just beach body coaches. This is for anyone and everyone. Right. And, and, you know, you know, my saying of, of knowledge is potential power. I want to add to that because yes, we are giving you knowledge in these podcasts for potential power, but the power is not power until execution comes along. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think that's a perfect segue to talk about what we do on a daily basis to execute a successful day-to-day -day life. Right. Yeah, for sure. So, so daily habits, this is something that, um, I didn't quite understand how important little things like making your bed were mm -hmm. until I really started delving into personal development. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now for the listener, that's like, okay, what's this personal development? I think a lot of people, when they hear that word, they think of woo woo, like self-help books and whatnot. Yeah. I know, I know I hundred percent used to be that person. Oh yeah, totally. Like when I would go to Barnes and Noble, cause I, in medical school, I would, I would study at Barnes and Noble a lot. And you know, when I would take breaks from studying, I would go walk down the aisles and the self-help aisle, it just always kind of made me roll my eyes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of that is because I like, I learn best listening versus reading. And so I never, I wasn't that this was before the time of podcast and definitely yeah. I don't, I don't even know if audiobook, I'm sure audiobooks were available, but maybe not as easy. Um, I know they that were they like were CD. Yes, exactly. And I did. Yes. The first 
a uh, personal development CD I bought was um, called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Have you read that? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. it's such a great book. Mm-hmm. I remember I, I was listening to it in the rental car that I rented on one of my um, interviews for residency. It, it was I was on the the East Coast and just driving, listening to it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is life changing. So that was kind of when I first started to open my mind to okay, maybe this isn't all just woo woo, you know look at yourself in the mirror and, and I'm good enough. I'm strong enough and yeah. doggone it. People like me, you know? <laughs> well, I think like the words self-help, like nobody wants to admit that they need help for themselves, so you true. know? And so like, I just think it's the title that really like makes people like, I don't need self-help. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not crazy. I don't need help. Like, yes, you know, yes. It's not even that. It's just resources to help you sharpen the talents and who you are as a person already. Just polishing what you already have, not like saying that you're crazy and you need help in these health books. You know? Right. Right. And honestly, I think that, you know, whoever started the trend of, of instead of calling them self-help, calling them personal development, I love that. Mm-hmm. And I think that people that don't do personal development are the ones that are guaranteed to live a mediocre life. I, I think I would have to agree with that. Right. Because I think that you can only do so much without knowing what your true potential is. And I think that personal development is a huge thing that helps you explore that. Like I know like personal development was a game changer for me. It wasn't a a diploma from high school. It wasn't like not a course I've taken, like nothing. Like the things that I have learned the most from, like the biggest things that I have carried and retained is from personal development. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm trying to think of the first time that I ever um, started hearing about how successful people have their morning routine and daily Mm -hmm. habits. And and that's kind of one of the things that they all have in common. But the first daily habit that I ever thought about that I'm like, huh, I never thought about how this little action could be a game changer, but it really is, is making your bed. Yes. Like okay. I, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I am an I like do. I am a advocate for mm-hmm. like a crusader in making sure you make your bed. I post it every single day. I didn't today. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh wait. <laughs> but I will. Right. But I always do because one, it keeps me accountable. And two, like that is seriously been the biggest staple in changing how my days go. Like, isn't that crazy? I have an entirely, it is, but I have an entirely different day if my bed is made first thing in the morning, especially Ab- because they don't climb back into it. <laughs> right, right. So let me ask you this: Did you grow up in a household that made you make your bed? No. See, I didn't um, either. Well, I mean, like I. I was a rebel though. I never liked cleaning my room or anything like that though, but I wasn't like yeah. taught like first thing in the morning, you need to make your bed. You know, I, mm-hmm. the first thing I did was get up and go to school, you know? So absolutely. I think, I think my parents, cause I was, you know, I'm first born and, um, I have always been a very strong willed. Um, sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes people can call me stubborn. I don't know mm-hmm. if I agree with that. No, I totally agree with that. Um, but, but I and think if you my, don't, it's because you're stubborn. You're stubborn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, um, I think, my parents just kind of let me like, okay, we're going to choose our battles and the room yes. is going to be one yes. of them, you know? Exactly. So <laughs> yes, I, exactly. I did not make my bed growing up and I definitely did not keep my room clean. And I, to be honest, like if you go into my bathroom right now, there's still crap all over the counter. Yeah. So, so being tidy is almost, it's almost everywhere in my house minus the bathroom. So I'm not perfect by any means. Never will I claim to be perfect, but my, I definitely grew up not making my bed, not having my room clean and not understanding the importance of having like order routine and, and routine. Or, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I believe it might've, it was either Lewis Howes or Tim Ferriss. Both are very well-known podcasters that are very respected in this this world of, of self-help, personal development, whatnot. Mm-hmm. It was one of those two dudes that first brought the concept of making your bed. And I'm like, huh, okay. And um, literally that little action was the beginning of creating a morning routine in which yes. habits, these habits are a life changer. Mm-hmm. And so, so let's start by, I, I know that people are going to ask, they want to hear, what are your daily habits? So let's start by you telling your morning routine. Okay. <laughs> so I get up at five o'clock in the morning. 
okay. Monday through Friday, every morning I I'm up at five. Yep. And the first thing I do is I crawl out of my bed and immediately make it like immediately. Not like I go make a cup of coffee. Like as soon as I crawl out of my bed, I make my bed before you just, pee. Yeah, before I pee. Like it's the wow. first thing I do. Okay. It is besides okay. shut my alarm off. It's the first thing I do, but I do that. And then I take a picture of it and I post it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning, like Tanner, like the other morning, he was like, here's your phone. I know you're going to take a picture of the bed. Like he doesn't get it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but he sees me do it every single day. Right, morning. right. And I love it though, because I know people are taking notice because in my DMs, I get so many people tagging me in their stories of them making their bed. They're like, I finally started making my bed. And I'm like, yes. yes. Like, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So forevermore, I will always post picture of what my bed is made. Um, but I make well, my bed. That, it's that accountability factor. Yes, totally. Like, I guarantee so like for me than it is for anybody else. But the fact that people are responding to it is great too. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee that since you didn't post a picture of it today, that you're going to get s- at least one person that <laughs> is like, where's your picture? <laughs> <laughs> Did you make your bed today? Right. right. <laughs> but I love it though. Cause my followers are they understand my routine too. And so like, if I miss something, like they're going to call me out on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. But So I do that. And then I typically kind of like make sure my husband has coffee before he leaves, like make sure he has like his lunch and stuff and everything like that. 5 30 AM kiss him goodbye. He leaves. And then I light a candle because I love candles. They're just peaceful to me. And I sit down and I read through my morning affirmations. So I sat down and wrote like maybe 10 things that like are basically goals that I want to accomplish or things that I want to improve in my life. And I wrote them down in an affirmation, which is essentially writing it down as if you already have it. So when I read it to myself, it's like, I'm telling myself what i already am experiencing or have. And I know that sounds woo woo, but I dare you to do that for a week and tell me you don't feel different. I triple dog dare you to do that. (laughs) So do you, would you mind sharing a few of those with the the audience? Okay. So one of them is because I used to really struggle with time management. I put on here, I put, I am a master of my schedule and time management. I get all of my work done early and efficiently. I have one about my relationship with my husband. It says I'm a loving and helpful wife. I have a great intimate relationship with my husband who enjoys spending time with me and is proud of who I am. Um, I am. Oh, I love it. That totally just gave me chills. <laughs> I am fulfilled in my marriage, business, and relationships. I am thankful for my body, and I love and care for it. Um, I have one about my home. It just says my home is my sanctuary and has a peaceful vibe. It is tidy, organized, and clean. It allows me and my family and my guests to feel relaxed and comfortable. And then I even have one about finances. It says I have thousands of dollars set aside in savings and I'm good at budgeting and managing my money. I pay all of my bills on time and have no debt and have the resources to bless others' lives. So just like little, I mean, there's a ton more, I love that. but just like little things that, like I said, are important to me are like goals that I want to achieve. I've just written them down in an affirmation as if they've already happened. Okay. So if I start my day by manifesting to myself, and again, it sounds woo woo, but I dare you to do it. By manifesting to myself the things or aspirations that I have in my life. Because if you start your day by knowing what you want, you will go about your day doing the things you need to accomplish that. At least for me, that's how it's been. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you light a candle, you say your affirmations, then what do you do? Because it's just like, it's just chill. I I light a candle just because it's like chill and peaceful for me. Yeah. And then, um, I typically go into what's called a power hour. So I host a power hour for myself and my coaches that I mentor every morning. I get on a zoom call with them from, um, like 7 30 AM to, 8.30 8.30 a.m. every single morning. So we get together and have like focused hour of just working. You can work on whatever you want, you know, but we all just like sit down and work together so that we start our days off productive. Wow. And knowing that like we got that. everything done. That, yeah. So that we got everything done that we could in that hour to know that at least throughout the rest of the day, like that's when you get like your personal development in or, um, you know, talk your conversations with other people or things like that, you know? So we kind of, as a team have a ritual that we start our days together business-wise, like we start our business days together. Right. And then, so every, anyone and everyone that can make it to the zoom call gets on there, whether it's talking the whole time, or maybe you're just working or if you have, I, 
I never even, it's it's kind of like a study group. Like I, um, it's quiet. I usually turn on like some Tony Robbins or like some kind of like motivational stuff and just let everybody just get their work done. And then the last five minutes, I usually share like a quote of the day and then everybody goes on throughout their day. And it's great because some people, (laughs) for some people it's at like five 30 in the morning for them, but they're committed. Like as long as I show up, like they'll be there, you know, that's that's kind of huge. Huge. Because I know that those are the things that work for me. I want to pass those things off to, I pass my best business practices off to my coaches. You know, I want them to be successful as well. So that's something that we have made routine. And then usually during that time, I'm drinking my pre-workout during that power hour. Mm -hmm. So that as soon as that power hour is done, I go and walk into my gym. I sleep in my gym clothes too. I go to bed in like my workout attire for the next day because then I don't have to get up and instead of in pajamas, I know, I know, but I sleep in just like a sports bra and my, I'm just going to say that. (laughs) I sleep in my, in my sports bra and my leggings that I'm going to wear in my workout because for me, I have been able to identify that like it's cold in the morning. I don't want to change my clothes. Like I don't want to get out of my pajamas. So my pajamas are now my workout clothes so that I don't justify to myself. I don't need to work out because it's cold and I don't want to change. Girl. <laughs> I'm you- eliminating as many, like as many reasons for me to not do something. I'm like eliminating. I hear you. I hear you. Yes. I'm the crazy girl that sleeps in my sports bra and leggings <laughs> for the next day. They're always clean when I put them on before bed. Okay. But anyways, I, um, and then I go and get my workout done and then I just go on throughout my day. Okay. Okay. Um, one little pointer that you could try doing is because definitely, and this is not the point of this particular episode, but, um, what you sleep best when the room is cold. Right. And and sometimes in the winter time, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, turning the AC on if you will. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in Dallas and even in Dallas, it can get chilly during the winter. I mean, obviously my, my Northern people are like, uh, no, you don't know, but, but still chilly enough the you want the room temperature to be between about 60 and 69 degrees. I, mm-hmm. I believe the official like perfect temperature is between 61 and 69, but somewhere in the 60s. So any colder than that, um, you want to heat it up and any harder than that, you want to cool it down. Right. Mm-hmm. But one little trick that you can try is, um, a lot of, um, thermometers, you can basically put on a, a timer so that it, you know that you wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. So mm-hmm. 20 minutes before you wake up, the, the heater c- kicks on. So you're not waking up with like, cause that's the worst. I mean, yeah. I don't live yeah. in that anymore since I'm in Southern California, but like when I was in Oklahoma, like there would be times where I would wake up I and mean, you just don't want to get out of bed when it's cold, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that Unless I'm saying, like, like, and your pajamas are warm. And yes. so you don't want to get out of your pajamas to change. It's cold. Yes. But yeah, my husband and I sleep in like an ice box. It's 65. Our thermostat yeah. is 65 every single night. And we That's keep good. our ceiling fan on yep. year round, whether it's winter or not. Cause he's yes. like a space heater anyway. So uh-huh. I'll be fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We both have to sleep in like Arctic temperatures. My little brother is staying with us this weekend and I gave him a space heater. I'm like, you're going to need no this. Way. He, like sleep in an igloo <laughs> basically. So no. yeah, but that's a good idea. I never thought about like putting the timer on my thermostat to change in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, this this is not the reason for this podcast, but what you sleep in, depending on, you know, your, your significant other and whatnot, (laughs) because (laughs) Because <laughs> yesterday on the Fitz Friday Live, we talked yeah. about, um, you know, and everyone's different. So yeah. you obviously don't have an issue with your like being in touch and tune with your like sexy. Like I know that that part of your relationship is healthy, not because you've given me details, but, <laughs> but I know that you're all good. I think you can tell by a way that a couple interacts. Though, Absolutely. Too. Like Absolutely. what's what their sex life is like. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and for, for those of you that are not as happy with that part, um, maybe going to bed and workout clothes is not the best I- idea, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do. I, I know a lot of people that literally put their workout clothes by their bed. So that's the yeah. first thing that they get into. So, okay. So you go get your workout in and, and that's your, your morning routine in the first few hours of your day, huh? Oh, this I forgot one thing though. Oh, oh, what? Before I start doing my affirmations, I always pour me a glass of water with a lemon. Oh. That's because I don't drink coffee. I'm just not a coffee drinker. Right. So every morning I have a cup of lemon water as I do my affirmations. 
that, and that's freaking so important. You, Mm -hmm. you're refilling that, that tank. So, so a lot of yours are similar to mine because I'm sure we've read a lot of the same personal development. Probably, which is funny because we weren't like, okay, let's coordinate what we're going to do. No, it's just successful people leave clues. And so it doesn't surprise me if we have similar habits. Absolutely. One book that I highly recommend, and I haven't read it all because it's literally like two, three inches thick is, um, the, the book by Tim Ferriss, um, tools of Titans. Yeah. And, and he, I mean, that, that is exactly what the book is about. It's, it's written brilliantly because it's little short chapters and it's three different, um, sections, uh, health, wealth, and, um, maybe oh, what's the third one. There's three major, th- but, but he looks at like, if, if there is an icon in the health industry and he'll take that person and basically have the chapter about that person is literally, you know, can be anywhere from two pages to like six or seven. And it talks about the tools that this person uses and habits that this person uses to create the success that they have in that, that field. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so many of these people have talk about their daily, their morning behaviors, their daily habits. Tony Robbins is one of them. Like he lives in Florida and he has this tank. Of course, he's a a billionaire. Um, but he has this amazing mansion and this little, little, it's, it almost looks like a, like a box that's like a coffin, but into the, um, the ground that's his tank that is cold water. And he literally does a dunk in that because of cold water therapy. And like, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I, I mean, I could do that. If I set my mind to it, I can do anything. Yeah. That I set my mind to yeah. It. yeah. But when I'm tempted to try that in if the morning, you were given an option, yeah. you're probably not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's rough. Like, you know, I've, I've tried a few mornings uh, where I just turn the cold water on and try to get underneath that shower. And like, that's, that's no joke. I, I can't say that that's part of my daily routine. I've tried it, um, but there are definitely some benefits to it. So let me talk about my routine. So I actually don't wake up to an alarm um, because I don't have a significant other that has to get up and whatnot. Um, and I work mm-hmm. from home, so I, I make my own schedule. Um, yeah. So I actually let my body just naturally wake me up. And it typically happens about 530. I've always been kind of a, um early to bed, early to rise person, even when I was a teenager mm-hmm. and in college. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I sleep to six 30 or even, oh my gosh, heaven forbid seven, Ooh, that's a late morning. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know? and, totally that's, is. and that's even, even when I go to bed late, I will still wake up to, to that. And, and, yeah. um, so I, I wake up on my own. So there's no, um, practice of turning off the alarm or pressing snooze or whatnot, but I do want to, um, make a note because you wake up to an alarm every day. And Mm -hmm. for listeners, I challenge you to put the alarm, um, somewhere that you have to get up and move movement creates energy. And I know that people that are trying to start good daily habits and waking up earlier every day, it's a challenge to press snooze or to not Mm -hmm. press snooze. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, the first thing is, well, a lot of us use our cell phones for an alarm now. Mm -hmm. Um, you shouldn't, and not the purpose of this episode either, but, um, you shouldn't have your cell phone close to you anyway at night because of yeah. the EMFs. Mm-hmm. But so it's dual purpose why you want to put your alarm away. Um, yeah. if you are using an old school alarm, I, um, recommend you getting one that, um, has the, the wavelength of light that doesn't disrupt your sleep because, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the purpose of this is not, to talk about how to get your best sleep quality. But that is one thing that I know a lot of people have alarm clocks that, um, use led lights that, that, that little light from your alarm can actually disrupt your sleep and, and you're Mm -hmm. not getting the the highest quality sleep that you can. So, so move that alarm away from your bed. And then, um, a great book who this, the author of this book was actually spoke at the leadership conference last weekend in Vegas, Mel Robbins. Um, she's got so many great YouTube videos. Um, she, her book, um, the five second rule you've read that, right? I haven't. Oh girl, you've got to that next book. Yes. Next that's, book. that is, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a game changer. And it's, um, she, the five second rule is all about how you can literally change your life in five seconds. And it, it all has to do with that, that mental block of, of 
what holds so many people back and hers, her journey started out with her battle, her morning battle with the alarm because she had a problem with pressing snooze. And so literally she used this technique of like literally counting down backwards from five, four, three, two, one and go. And that there's something that happens mentally in your brain. That's like, okay, let, let's do this. And so if you are challenged with the snooze button, I would recommend you reading or listening to the five second rule by Mel Robbins. It's a great book. And we'll, we'll put these book references and um, podcast references in the, the show notes. For sure. So, so back to my routine. So I actually don't wake up to an alarm. I don't make the bed first thing. Cause I always have to pee really badly when I wake up. So <laughs> I pee first. Um, but then I, I actually always have my, my either swell bottle or my Yeti right by my bed. I fill it up before I go to bed so that that's the first thing that I grab. And I, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. I grab the swell and I take it to the toilet with me because sometimes I need to pee and sometimes I'm there a little bit longer. I'm just going to say, so literally I start refilling my hydration level with water <laughs> almost the moment that I wake up, you know? Yeah. Um, so after that, I brush my teeth and then I go make my bed. And then this is where uh, some of you guys are going to think I'm weird, but I don't care. Um, this is, this is where I start my, um, my morning meditation, but I do it in a little bit different way. Um, and when, <laughs> when I saw Melissa doing the, the infrared light on her face, because she had someone give that to her, I've been doing that now for, over a year. So I have, it's called, um, a, a Juvi J O O V Y Jovi Juvi, um, infrared light. And it, it's literally, <laughs> it, it looks like, it, it looks like a very woo woo tool. I have it hung right where I, I meditate in the morning and I literally, you turn it on and I sit, my face is within, you know, 10 to 12 inches of this light. You literally, <laughs> People are going to laugh when they visualize this, but you have to wear, the, yep, yep. You have to wear the, like, you know, you've been to the a tanning bed. goggles. Yes. Please yep. tell me the tanning. Yes. yes. I was so <laughs> hoping you would say that. Ah. You know, you have to take a picture of this now and share it. I know, right? Awesome. <laughs> but it gets better, guys. It gets better. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> because there is benefit to getting exposed to morning daily light, right? Well, sometimes, and you know, I don't like I'm it's morning here in Cal California and I can sit on my balcony and get natural light. Right. But th not every day. I mean, there are some days that it's cloudy, not many, Yeah. but this tool would be helpful for those of you that live in places like Seattle or Oregon or, mm. or Misawa hail where I used to live in Northern Japan. I mean, there were mm. so many days that it was cloudy and I didn't realize how important the sun and sun exposure was on your mental status. Right. And so I have these it literally looks like an old school MP3 player and I'll, I'll find the brand of it because, um, this was something that I learned about from a podcast. I'm trying to think it might've been a bulletproof coffee from Dave Asprey. Um, but literally there are these earbuds and you, so when, when I sit, so I have my meditation pillow, so I sit cross leg, I'm, I, in front of my infrared light, <laughs> you're getting mental picture. I can see the, the I giggling. feel like I'm like picturing you like a little bug, like hovering <laughs> in front of a light. You know how they do that? Like yep, <laughs> literally yep. with your and, goggles and everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I may or may not be naked. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> your morning rituals are way more exciting than mine. <laughs> I figured that it would give a, a lot of people a good laugh if anything. Awesome. So, so I put these in my ear and then I press on. So the on button gives you 12 minutes, which it's the perfect time for me to meditate. And that way I don't have to like put on a timer. Cause when you're, especially when you're new to meditation, like one minute can feel like 10 minutes and you're like looking and you're like, Oh, this, this is pointless. Cause I'm, I'm now more concerned about the time. Right. So literally I sit in front of my infrared light. I put my, my earbuds in that as soon as I click the on button, it shines bright light into the, my inner ear. And so this is, this is actually, uh, you can get signals to the deep parts of your brain that basically tell your brain, wake up through your eyeballs and also through your inner ears. And so that is what this is doing. It's starting off my daily diurnal, um, 
rhythms, if you will, of exposure to light. And it's telling the deep parts of my brain, okay, it's time to, to wake up and start that pattern, right? So it's 12 minutes. And so I literally sit in front of my infrared with my little tanning bed goggles and my, my light in my ear may or may not be naked. (laughs) And I meditate for at least 12 minutes. Sometimes I meditate longer. Um, sometimes I just, my, my brain is like, okay, it's not letting me freaking do anything. So, so I, I meditate less time. That being said, Um, I always start my meditation out with thoughts of gratitude and thoughts of gratitude are so important. And I try and have those thoughts literally start from the moment that I get out of bed and my feet are on the ground and I'm walking to go pee and whatnot, like, because your thoughts are everything and your thoughts set your, your mood for the day. They set your mindset for the day. They, they set everything. And so, so the first part of my meditation is in gratitude. And, you know, some days, um, most days I I'm, I'm grateful for a lot of the same things. And other days I'm grateful about new things, minutia. Um, sometimes I'm grateful about big events that are coming. Sometimes I'm grateful for that, which is not known. Like for instance, the, the man that I know the universe is getting ready for me that I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with, I'm grateful for him. I don't know who he is. Maybe I've met him. Maybe I haven't, but I'm grateful for him. And then I go into, um, I don't know what the proper term is because there's different kinds of, of meditation, right? There's transcendental meditation. There's, I, I mean, that, that could actually be a whole, we should probably get a, a meditation specialist on. That would be a cool um, interview. Um, but yeah, but I go into a space where I try and clear my thoughts and I focus on my breath. And so um, box breathing is, is a technique that a lot of people, especially newbies to medicine, not to medicine, to meditation can start with. And it's literally inhaling for a set, you know, four or five counts, holding that inhale for the four or five counts, and then exhaling for the four or five counts and holding that exhale for four or five counts. So it's, it's a box. It's inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, hold. And that way you're focusing on your breathing and you're all of those little thoughts that, that can come in and out of your mind, come and go right now there are some great meditation apps and there are some some people that meditate with those thoughts coming in and out but let me just tell you no matter who you are how old you are what your religious beliefs are what not meditation can help everyone and almost every single successful person that i've ever read about heard interviewed what not uses meditation in their day and to start your day off with meditation is highly recommended okay I know some people that will meditate for hours. Um, one thing, have you ever tried a float tank before? I have not. I want to, but I haven't done it yet. That that's I, I've only done it once. Um, and it was pretty cool because I was like, I don't know what to think about this. Because what you do, so so a float tank is basically it's one way to to meditate, and literally it forces you to go to a place that a lot of people have never gone. So you get into these little pods. <laughs> Everyone's like, Oh my god, this is such a woo-woo episode. But no, yeah, they're like really popular though. These yes. float spot things are like huge, they're yes. everywhere. For a reason, for a reason, they, they can be a game changer. And I, the one time I did it, I was actually crazy impressed. Um, one, because you, okay. So you get into these pods that are, they look like space tanks and they are a tank full of water that has essentially, um, it's, it's essentially salt water. Okay. And you literally get into it and you float and it's the, the darkest dark that you've ever seen. Like you literally, like when you open your eyes versus close your eyes, you can't tell the difference. It's crazy. And you know, some people that are uh, claustrophobic, um, you can, you can open the pot up so that you can at least see some light. But if you're going to do it full balls to the wall, like you close that pod and you literally just lay there. And it's the craziest sensation because like, you lose sense of all sensation and you're, it's like you're floating in space. Like you're weightless. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then you're like, how am I going to like be in here for an hour? And then the next thing, you know, 
your hour is done and the light slowly comes on and the pod starts opening it up and like, it's crazy. It's amazing, but there's so many benefits and, and maybe that might be a future podcast interview. Someone who owns a float tank. There's actually one in San Juan Capistrano that, um, I have a gift certificate to that. I'm going to go, um, take Michelle Parks, um, Pio class one Saturday morning and then go float after that's my plan. Cause she teaches down in San Juan Capistrano, but, um, but, Meditation is so important and, and whether you get five minutes in 12 minutes in or 30 minutes or an hour, like I highly recommend you starting your day off with meditation. Now, after that, um, I, I stretch and, and I have, uh, an, a, a series of stretches that I do. And, um, I have my rumble roller, my foam roller. That's like hardcore. And I, I will stretch and then I will roll out and I do a series of stretches like downward dog. I do some, some, um, like sumo squats, like yoga sits. Um, and then I roll out my, my soft tissue and I mainly focus on my legs. Um, it, you know, I'll do the it bands, I'll do the quads and I'll do the hammies in the butt. Um, every now and then I'll, I'll roll out my upper body, but for the most part, I, I just roll out my legs and then I'm ready to come out of my bedroom and start my day. So, so that's, that's like my, my, usually about the first 30 minutes of my day, 30 minutes or less of my day is spent in my bedroom, um, and, and on my meditation pillow stretching. And then I come out and, and I start my day, my day. Once I get out of my room, I always start with coffee on um, more days than not. I make it, you know, the, the, with MCT oil plus or minus grass fed butter. Um, everyone knows like literally I have the bulletproof sticker right here. Everyone knows I'm a huge fan of Dave Asprey and, um, bulletproof coffee. Um, I use his brain octane brand every single day as my MCT oil. Um, plus or minus I use grass fed butter. Um, and, put some stevia and, and that's, that starts my day off. And then after that, I, my, my power hour, I don't spend it with anyone else, but I, I usually hit at least an hour of working because that is when I'm most focused and I, I get that work done before I get my workout done. So, um, more times than not that power hour turns into two. Um, so at some point I drink energized too. I love that stuff. So at some point in my my power hour or hours, I will drink my energize, but I definitely do best with working out in the morning. And I realize that not everyone can do that. Um, but there, there have definitely been a lot of different studies that have shown the benefits of people that work out in the morning. Mm. So, so that's my morning routine. Any surprises to you? I just keep visioning you with goggles on and I love it. <laughs> I just think that's Go so awesome. Goggles in my inner ears lit yeah, up. Yeah, your ears lit up. <laughs> so awesome. But the thing is, is like that stuff is there for a reason. It exists for a reason. Like there, clearly there are benefits to it. So yeah. I'm intrigued. Maybe yeah, I'll, absolutely. Maybe absolutely. I'll sit naked in a quarter with goggles on too. <laughs> <laughs> If my husband were home, I don't think much would get done though. I know. No, I always think about that. I'm like, man, when I'm in a relationship, <laughs> is this, is this really going to continue? Cause this is a little weird, but I, I definitely, I know all of the benefits. I know the benefits of infrared light therapy. I know the benefits of getting exposed sure. to light early in the morning. I know the benefits sure. of meditation. Um, and you know, at, at the end of the day, the, the man that the universe has ready for me that's, that I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with is going to love me for all of my weird quirks and idiosyncrasies. And, and I mean, I'm different. I know this, but I'm perfectly imperfect and I'm okay with it. So you find a match that's cool with it. <laughs> Tanner right? just is like, okay, like he doesn't, he, I don't think he loves it, but he doesn't question it. He's just like, you do you like, right. You right. take a picture of the bed first thing in the morning, go for it. I don't know why, but yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> oh, and you know, one thing, one thing I forgot to mention was, um, and this is a, a book that it, you can get a journal anywhere, but a gratitude journal, this is called the, the five, yeah. the, the five minute journal. And I love it. I, I'll show you how it's set up so that you literally, you type in, not type in, you write in your date, the date. It uh -huh. always starts off with some sort of quote or saying. So like this one, I, I just opened up to the back where it hasn't been um, filled out, but this one, if you're not the hero of your own novel, then what kind of novel is it? You need to do some heavy editing. Terrence McKenna, like just 
like one or two liners that just, little. yes, yes. Yeah. And then, um, it, it has basically three different places that you fill in every morning, which you, I am grateful for. And then it has three different things. What, what would make today great? And it has three different things. And then daily affirmations. I am mm -hmm. fill in the blank and yeah. it has that for the morning. And then it has the nighttime, which are, and I'm not as good at, at filling out the nighttime ones. Mm -hmm. Um, three amazing things that happened today. And then you fill them in and then how could have, how could I have made today even better? And, and I love that because it plays on the fact that your thoughts that you have before you go to bed are typically the thoughts that you wake up with. Yeah. And, and, you know, if, if you're going to bed with worry or with stress or with concern, you're going to wake up that way. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was listening to, have you listened to uh, miracle morning? I haven't, but a lot of people have like messaged me saying, oh, you're doing a miracle morning on my morning, like just routine every morning. And I've heard of that, but I didn't know there was like a legit, is yes. it a book or an yes. audio it, book? It, it's a book by Hal Elrod, E-L-R-O-D. It. Yeah, it's a great book. And, um, and it, it talks, you know, cause when I listened to this, I was like, I'm doing a lot of this already, but he definitely has a lot of, of great thought provoking ideas. And, and, um, and he, he talks about like, affirmations. He talks about a friend of his that, uh, when he was struggling in life, um, he was living with temporarily living with a friend and this friend, this was the first time that he was ever exposed to daily affirmations. And he said every morning he would hear this friend shouting from the roof in his shower, I am awesome. Or I am, I am, you know, like all of these things. And, and he was, he would always come to the door and be like thinking that he's shouting to him, but realizing, no, he's shouting his daily affirmations to himself. Mm -hmm. And this man was very successful. And so he went from thinking that that's kind of weird to, okay, there's something to this. Yeah. Right? But, and there's something to remember too, is when you choose to close yourself up from being open to methods or opportunities or learning more and stuff. The day that you decide you're no longer a student of life is the day you decide to fail. In my opinion, so true. So you true. need to always be open and always be willing to learn. I mean, we always talk about how you and I are, we're still students of life. Like oh, we yeah. share what we know and we hope that you will continue your education as just a person of life as well. Absolutely. Be, be open to it. You, yeah. my, my saying is I'll try everything once. Yes. Yes. So I do think you need to do affirmations more than once, but like, just give it a shot. I mean, as woo-woo as it sounds like do it by yourself. If you're worried about what people think of you, like you don't have to, you don't have to put it on a podcast if you don't want to. <laughs> no, I'm like, <laughs> all these people are going to be envisioning me like sitting naked with, with tanning goggles and, 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 and yep. And I don't care. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like it's these, this morning routine is not for anybody, but you, you are deciding how to start your day and that's powerful. So don't, don't start your day based off of, um, what other people's opinions are going to be of your, what you do in the morning, you know, like it's not for you. I know what you're laughing and I'm at. Giggling, I'm giggling because the listeners don't, don't realize, or some do, but, um, we have our Robert who, um, is our, our editor and our, does basically all of the technical stuff to make this podcast what it is. And, and, um, he's in our ears and we, we can also see if he types things and he just said cover idea for the, the thumbnail. So I'm going to, but of course I can't be naked for it, but that would totally be <laughs> a great picture. For you got to at cover. least do the goggles. At yeah. least do the goggles. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So why do you think your morning ritual, like how has it impacted you? Like how have you seen a difference of when you do your morning ritual when you don't? When, when I start my day off with, um, intent and purpose, like I am so much more productive. And I, I mean, it's not that I purposely test it to see if it's not, but on mornings in which I don't do my morning routine, I'm not as, as productive without a doubt. And I'm not as satisfied, I think, and not as, um, fulfilled because if you start your day off with all of this positive energy and positive thoughts and, and affirmations and emotions, like and not to say that that's the cure all be all that it's going to cure all depression and all, you know, all worries and, and woes. And it, you're going to all of a sudden be rich and famous and whatnot. You know, that's obviously not everyone's goal, but, and it's not my goal. I, I want to be my very, very best self. And if fame comes along with that, cool. I, that's not what I'm going for. Financial security is definitely something that will yeah. always be, um, part of who I am. And, um, 
you, that's just, it, it's a non-negotiable. It's, I'm never going to be at a part, a place in my life where that's not always, always a goal. Right. Yeah, for sure. But, but I, you know, I, I am, I feel like I am a successful person in life at 37, almost 38 years old. And, um, and I definitely believe that daily habits have a lot to do with that. So yeah, for sure. I know for me, it has completely changed my mindset. Like, like, I wish I would have started this routine when I was working full time because I think I would have had a totally different experience before I came home. Yeah. But I, because I would wake up like angry in the morning. Like, I would wake up in such a bad mood all the time. And yes. it was when Tanner and I first started living together that I realized it because when it's just you, you don't realize it because your mood isn't affecting anybody else because it's just you. Yes. So when Tanner and I started living together, like I would always wake up angry and like it affected our relationship because he was like walking on eggshells around me. Like, yeah. what am I doing wrong? Like, why are right? you so angry? You know. <laughs> so one morning he like, he just like took me in his arms and he was like, nobody's out to get you. Like, you just need to like, Aww. like you just got to chill. Oh, I love and I him. Felt, I know I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so bad because I didn't realize that like the Mm. way I was starting my mornings was something that it was personally affecting him, you know? So especially if you have a partner, not just for yourself, but also like the people around you that have committed to spending their life with you deserve the best version of you. And I definitely think that your morning routine has a huge part to do with how you start your day has a huge part to do with how you affect the people that you're surrounded by. Absolutely. But the most important thing is how it affects you, the individual, because if you wake up that way, it, it, it totally affects you in every way. One in the, um, the miracle morning, he talks about, um, you know, it, there's been plenty of, of different people quoting how many hours of sleep you need. And the fact is that everyone's different, but the most important thing, and he brings this point up and I totally agree with this, uh, looking back in retrospect, um, especially because, you know, when I was practicing anesthesia, anesthesiologist, we live by the OR schedule and the OR schedule starts early. And especially if you're on call and you've got cases to do, you know, overnight or, you know, add-ons that are like early before the first case. And usually the first case starts at seven or seven 30. So if you've got an add-on to start at 6 AM, I mean, you're starting your day off early and many days I, I woke up angry at having to wake up that early as well. But, um, he talks about the fact that you need as much sleep as you tell your brain. So if you go to sleep and and you're like, Oh, I know I'm going to have to wake up at 5 AM and and it's 12 and and that's not enough hours of sleep. You wake up and you're like, Oh, I I only got five hours sleep. But instead of telling your brain, like, Oh my gosh, I, I feel so rested. Like literally it's, it's something that easy. It's, it's changing your mindset and, um, going to bed thinking, Oh, I'm not going to get enough sleep tonight versus, Oh, I'm so grateful for the day and I'm grateful for the sleep I'm about to get. However much sleep it is like that, literally that mindset change can be a game changer. So, yeah. So any other points that, that you want to make? Cause obviously this is, this is mostly about our morning routine and habits alone. Like, you know, daily habit of getting exercise in. So powerful, whether you realize it or not, and whether they're good habits or not. Like if you wake up angry every morning, like I used to, like, that's a habit. Like yes. you wake up and that's what you do because that's what your mind is trained to do. First thing in the morning, we're up and we're angry because we have to be awake right now, you know? Yes. And yes. so whether you think the habit of hitting the snooze on your alarm or the habit of going to bed way later than you think that you should and still trying to get up anyway, like every little thing that you do is a, a domino effect throughout your day. And I think that's why it's so important to protect the habits that you do have in the morning and make sure that they are beneficial because they're a domino effect for the rest of your day and how you are going to interact with yourself and with everybody around you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so we, we could talk for a long time, um, about all of the other habits that we think are important, but this is just kind of a first, um, a good, more, more focus on morning habits with, and, Mm -hmm. and morning habits, including right before you go to bed that will lead to your morning. Um, but yeah, but, but, I'm sure that we will do another episode about other important habits. Um, cause this is a big broad topic for sure. But, um, but yeah. I think that we, especially the, you know, this episode is, is happening towards the end of, of 2017. So a lot mm-hmm. of people are starting to get into the mindset of, you know, the new year's resolutions and, and what I want to change. And, and I just challenge you 
to not wait till January 1st to change the habits Thank that you. are holding you back yeah. from you being your very best self. And it starts with little mm -hmm. things like making your bed. So, mm -hmm. so, um, we always end every episode with a very important message that we would love to hear quoted to us, including Hey Girl, Hey. <laughs> 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 It'll happen. It will. Yeah. One thing that I do want to add though, before we close it out is of course. it may be, you guys may be sitting here thinking, well, of course you guys have all the time in the world to do all these great things in the morning because you both work from home. If there's anything I can tell you, like I said, I wish I had had these habits when Absolutely. I was working full time, because I think I would have had a totally different experience. And because of that, I would have had a totally different experience with the people that were in my life at that time. So percent. 100%. If you are working full time, whether you're up at the butt crack of dawn, like my husband and I, <laughs> yep. or you have, you know, you're a, you work night shifts or whatever, you have to make your habits in the morning a priority. If it means you have to wake up 15, 20 minutes earlier, maybe the first habit you can start is setting your alarm clock to wake you up five minutes earlier and yeah, the next day, 10 minutes earlier and the next day, 15 minutes earlier so that you're not like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do all the things this morning, but like set yourself up for success. Ease yourself into those habits. Habits take time to build. So be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself the time to create time to and be create able to new establish habits. new habits. Yeah. To be able yeah. to establish new habits. Cause, cause even if you can just start by making the bed, everybody has five seconds before they do anything to make your bed. And I promise you, even just making your bed will make you value bigger, better habits in addition to that in the morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. So Synthony, what message do we have you for our are, listeners? You're a good person and you deserve good things to happen to you. Amen. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the podcast of Fits and Healthy Podcast. We love you all. We thank you for your support and we'll see you next episode. Ciao. Make sure that you find us on social media. You can find Synthony on Instagram and Facebook at Synthony. So that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E and on Snapchat at Synthony P and find me on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Club Fitz Fitness. Remember that's F-I-T-Z Fitness. And on Snapchat, just at Club Fitz. I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy Podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional doctor diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now go live a fits and healthy life.